drug for its in entirety. Yes, sir. That was LD and ED. Lethal dose and therapeutic dose. Well, they call it ED rather than PD. I have no idea. But somebody in there with me. I'll put that up. Effective. It's like pneumonia. Who in the world ever thought of putting a P in front of pneumonia? <laughs> Some Greek had their throat on it. Yeah, no, no, no. I got pneumonia, but first I got a P. Oh, P. <laughs> and here we have just have the example of the therapeutic range versus uh, therapeutic range. Uh, your, your therapeutic dose which would fall within here, and then your lethal dose, which means that if you come outside of that, then it's going to be causing toxicity and then uh, danger for the person. No, 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 no. You just have to know it. I'm not going to make you do that. If, if you want to go on and become a drink practitioner, they will make you do that. Uh, years ago, when we used to do peaks and frog medication, is that you didn't have all the calculations, so they would give you the uh, uh, numbers, and then you had a sit down and actually do the calculation to figure out are you within the range or not. That was the same era when we used to do uh, uh, blood tests. And you would put a drop of blood on a microscope slide that had these little lines that were nanometers apart and you had to sit there and count how many red blood cells and multiply times three times whatever in order to find, find out what the hematic rhythm was. That's the area of the area that would be four computers. <laughs> what was nice though was when we got sent over the head of the storm and then we had the uh, had the lab set up, we didn't have that equipment. So how are we going to do this? So, so a couple of us nurses and a couple of old laboratory guys got together and we sat down and put out all the formulas for the, the young kids that could, we could figure this thing out without having a copy. Just another example of these reports and so forth. Pharmacotherapeutics peak is the highest plasma concentration of the drug at a specific time. You give a medication, what happens is you have the, the uh, it, it comes in, it builds to a, a uh, it's peak or it, its highest dose, and then it ta usually tapers off. Uh, and then it, and then you have it, it's half-life, then you are able to calculate how many pills you have to give a day, you know, for to maintain your therapeutic dose. Uh, but the peak is when it's working the best. Uh, those of you who have migraines, mm -hmm. and you take your medication, you know what the, you know when the peak hits. But the fact you're sitting there, uh, uh, well, that's over, and then we have the residuals thereafter. But for a little while there, you have ecstatic. I've got a neighbor's gun. I never had migraines in my life. I think I've had four headaches in my entire life. But I've got a neighbor who has that, and she can tell me right away when the medication is. There it is. For peak, we draw the, the Medicaid, we draw the blood one to three hours after administration. Because that's when the peak occurs after the medication is given. Remember, it, it takes up up to a half hour to get into the system. Even with IV, you still wait one to three hours after administration because we get to the highest concentration of medication within that time period. The highest concentration. And the trough. Is the lowest, the lowest concentration of the drug, and that's drawn immediately prior to the next dose, uh, sometime within a uh, half hour to 15 minutes of the, of the, of the next dose to be given, to see where are we. When a talk is given, is not to, it's a, to make sure that we're in the, in the therapeutic range, uh, and, and to make sure that we're not too high. <coughs> 
the medication we are given by peak and crop, a lot of times they are still uh, trying to figure out what the therapeutic dose is and are they meeting it. And therefore, therefore, they're still ranging. Do we have enough medication to maintain that therapeutic dose? Or are we giving too much to what we're, we're going to look at? Does that make sense? There's peak, and trough would be the other one. You all have probably been given a loading dose at one time or another. If you've had a, uh, an infection, yeah. You're supposed to get 250 milligrams of whatever medication four times a day, and the doctor says, well, take 500 to begin with. That's a loading dose. It gives you the highest concentration in the shortest period of time in order to, to be effective. Yes? A good one is uh, the z pack that you get for your winter cold. Correct. You take the first two tabs and all the next three pills. Correct. So you're, you're, uh, it helps the body to, to regain its control over the disease. Absolutely. I like, like, you know what I've been saying, you know, the doctor's information just happens to me about it. And then by the first, I'm like, oh, well, maybe you shall apply it. Like, is it a loading dose, I guess? And that's two, two different things. Number one, you can consider that a loading dose. And number two is that what he wants to do is get the medication into his body. Especially if you have continued or a chronic condition that requires antibiotics on a regular basis, sometimes what they'll do is they'll, they'll give you either IV or IM in order to rapid response that medication while you're getting your and stuff. So you could call that a loading dose, but it's a little bit more complicated. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? What you do is to help the body get back into control faster. Uh, like with, with an infection, you have all this bacteria, and then what it does is it helps it to uh, get it under control, under control so the rest of the medication can work. It may not kill it off, but what it'll do is, is prevent it from continuing to grow or continue to colonize it. And then as you start taking the other medication, it continues to process. Are there medicines that don't? Are effective to do the loading dose? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I've got a good friend, the Joxon, you don't want to do the loading dose. Uh, because that, that puts good. You're trying to get rid of arrhythmias and give a loading dose that actually gives you arrhythmia. Uh -huh, that's more of a plan about it. That's the common one. Uh, all food anti inflammatories, uh, you may be given a high dose of, of uh, ibuprofen in the very beginning and then your rest of your dose is, is regular. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, ma'am. If you get a shot for like, a shot for a is that the same thing as getting it into the system? Or is that like a loading dose? Of that's just getting into the system faster. It's, it's a, uh, because it, it's a steroid, and, and it, it, it's a non specific. So it affects all those organs, it affects the heart, the bronchus, and so forth in order to make everything work effectively. So that, that to get it in there quick, more, more quicker. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.
genetic, genetic factors which, which will uh, cause the medication to either be used effectively or fast, decrease the effect and open effect at all. I can't think off the top of my head, but there's a couple. There are some hyper anti-hypertension medications which are not effective for the African American or Native American because of genetics. And they have to go to a different kind of medication in order to be effective or a combination in order for them to be effective. Okay. Talked about this already. Uh, yes, or Monday about about absorption, uh, the drug response, and how it's affected by absorption. Uh, we have um, other things that they will affect it. Your vomiting, diarrhea, increased mobility of your uh, GI tract, decreased the ability to absorb. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If it goes in here and comes out here immediately, it's not going to stick around anywhere. Constipation, if you slow mobility down, then you increase absorption. So if things slow down, then things get absorbed more better. It kind of makes sense. If you spill some water on your carpet, if you get it up right away, you don't have a wet spot. Leave it there for a little while, you have a spot until it dries out. We talked about these as well. Uh, about the uh, barrier, blood brain barrier, protein binding, and the um, placental uh, crossover uh, uh, for placental or for uh, fetuses. There are another medication that's do cross over. They have to be uh, either, either stopped or carefully monitored so that the uh, uh, forming child is not damaged. And these are we talked about already. Liver functions, uh, metabolism. In the very young, uh, infant livers are very much immature and then don't capture a lot of the medication or metabolize a lot of medication. You either have poor effect or you have toxic effect because of, of uh, their age. And then the elderly, because of, of the organs, uh, you have to remember that a person who's 90 years old on the outside, or 90 years old on the inside. And things aren't working quite as effectively as they used to. And body weight. Effective, uh, has an effect as well. <laughs> you being very thin or very heavy uh, it will affect uh, the uh, drug's absorption uh, and how it works throughout the body. For example, you have someone who's very heavy is that they have quite more of the blood, uh, peripheral blood system go through system to go through in order for that medication to get to a two separate ones. Uh, if someone who's very thin, they have just the opposite. So, again, if you don't have any disease processes involved. Well. But that already? Okay. And that emotional factor. Uh, emotions do play effect in medication, and how effective they are, or how effective they are. Yes, ma'am. Why, why does it? What, what about it? What about emotions? I don't understand quite, like physiologically, why does it affect it so much? Well, the best way to describe it is magic. <laughs> uh, your body is working out of equilibrium when it's under stress. Uh, whether it's good stress or bad stress, it's working out of equilibrium. Uh, and, and the body, you can, can um, uh, it'll, it'll affect the medication you take in. For example, uh, you had uh, operation on your foot. Okay, you're having a lot of pain. 
you're really stressed out because you have a lot of pain, you're in a cast, and you have clinical tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, you take your pure pain medication and they may not have an effect for the fact that you are so geared up and, and con concentrating on what's going on, the effect of the medication is not there. I, I just, I, I was thinking about the other night, the day before um, school, I couldn't sleep and I was really excited, so I was bad and I took a Benadryl thinking that would help. And, and you stopped during the first part of class? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just didn't sleep very well. I, I only got about five, four hours of sleep, and I was still exhausted, but I had a different issue. I didn't sleep well. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but I had it. It was really bad. I was wondering. I just called my sister. <laughs> I just called my sister. <laughs> 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 I've got six sisters, by the way. <laughs> Three brothers. Wow. Um, but they will cover that fact, yeah. I was so curious. It's interesting that, that the uh, first, the night before the first day of class, the night before the first day of clinical, I don't sleep well either. I get all geared up for this. First day. I've been, I've been teaching this a lot. Yes, sir. I won't sleep either. <laughs> Drug history. If you take opium as a drug of leisure, <laughs> Giving a uh, medication of Demerol, you may not get the same effect as you would somebody who doesn't do that on a regular basis. Drug tolerance, first, you've been on medication for a long period of time. Uh, generally, their tolerance becomes higher where they can still take the medication, they have to take a higher dose to get the same effect. Um, generally, we have this. Uh, first, students taking medication for whatever reason, uh, whether it gets them pleasurable or whatever else. And then as they're taking it, then they, their body becomes tolerant to it, and then they have to start increasing the dose. And a lot of times, tolerance turns into addiction. Not always, but sometimes. And what about with anti-inflammatories? Is it still in Tolerance? No, anti-inflammatories anti go into your body, do the job, and get out. Of uh, course, they hurt your stomach and, and then not your friend day otherwise. So a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. over, don't, don't get tolerant of and, and Even if you take them on a regular basis for a long period of time, uh, you buy this bill of tolerance. Right, the, the thing was that uh, they might be giving a placebo to see if, they, if they're really having a response or not. So in some cases, they will do that. No, I'm good. Okay, you're good. Okay. I have an answer. <laughs> oh, I have an answer for any question. You may not be the right one, but I got an answer. Does everybody, like, Ambien is supposed to be short term so it's in first sleeping problems? But does that mean everyone will go to tolerance to it? Can some people take it long term and then everyone gets No, everyone gets, gets, gets tolerance to it. However, <coughs> It depends on how often you're taking it. Um, a lot of people who are taking sleep aid and then now, now they, they, can't, they can't sleep because of sleep aid. They haven't gone tolerance, but they've gone to be dependent on it. Now they, they can't relax until that medication comes on board so they can't relax until they're asleep. Uh, I had a patient who had that problem because she always was taking some, something in order to make her go sleep. And we pushed her over to, uh, I don't know, what's her name? She was over at the Tylenol for night drugs. We tried to help her body to relax. Any aches and pains or whatever else, we were kind of minimizing the pressure of those things. But, but it, that's a dependence for the person's tolerance. That's a good question. Any other questions? My clock says 10 minutes till, come back at 5 minutes after.